Welcome everyone, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm the product manager here at Oracle. And today I'm going to show you in just a few moments what you can do with Oracle SQL CL once you've downloaded it. So I'm on my Mac, I've got the zip. I might start just by dragging this into my applications folder. On a Windows box, you might put it on your desktop or in program files. It really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you're going to end up in the terminal. The only requirement for running Oracle SQL CL, which I should say is our latest command line interface to Oracle Database, that's why we're in the uh, shell, is you have Java. So the easiest way to make sure you've got what you need is to say Java version. We require a JRE, or Java Runtime Engine, of at least version 8. So you're looking for a 1.8 something here. JDK will also work. You just want to make sure it's in the path so SQL can find it. So I'm in my bin directory. You might want to add that bin directory to your path so you can launch this from anywhere. I'm going to connect just like I would in SQL Plus. All the SQL Plus commands and connection options are also uh, compatible and fully supported here in Oracle SQL CL. So one place you might want to get started is with the help. This will print all of the commands. So you'll see all of your comfortable and familiar SQL Plus commands here, as well as a lot of new ones. The new ones are underlined. And let's look at one right away. Let's look at DDL. This does exactly what it sounds like. It'll generate the DDL for the locations table. Now you can affect the way the DDL is formatted by using the set DDL command. And if you type help set DDL, it'll show you all the different flags. And you'll notice that these are the DBMS metadata get DDL flags or the transform flags. So you can turn things off like storage, constraints, the schema. Let's look at something very basic, just writing queries. This is a very boring query, um, and I've changed my mind after starting on it. Um, what I want to do is actually just use my arrow keys like a sane person would try and come up in the buffer and change it on the fly, which I can now do. And I can use the tab key, the autocomplete column names, because I'm a lazy typer. And where 1 equals 2 is really silly. Let's do where commission percent. I can never spell that right, so I love that there. I can hit enter here, or at any point I can say control R, and it'll just run what's in the buffer. And here's my data. So this formatting is a little bit different than what you're used to. I'm using a formatting style called ANSI console. This smart formats the data to the screen. If I unset that, you're going to get exactly what you would see in SQL Plus. So instead of printing to the size of the data or the column, it prints to the size of the, um, the column definition. So I can fit a lot more on the screen now um, using something like the ANSI console SQL format. But I can also do things like set SQL format to CSV. So people love in SQL Developer the ability to take a result set and format the output to a comma-separated values list. I can do that in SQL CL now as well. Don't want the column headers. SQL plus rules apply. So I just say set head off. Run that again. No column headers. One page. Now, uh, I also have access to all the queries I've ever ran um, up to the last 100. And I can do that by using the arrow keys. Just 
shareable on that one. I can also just type the word history and it prints that history list for me. So if I want to go back to um, number 62, there's that command. I run that. So info is a new version of describe. This looks a little bit ugly, so let's try to make this print a little bit easier. I'm using an obnoxiously large font size for this video. We'll make it real world looking for just a moment. So instead of getting just a list of the column names, the data types, and their nullability, I get all of that, but I also get um, how fresh the statistics are, some of the basic statistics on the table. It's in-memory status. So if you're using the in-memory feature in 12C, that comes in handy. The actual comments on the table itself. Um, we mark the primary key with a star in the column list. You get the column comments. We also print a list of the indexes, and not all of the constraints, but the foreign key or referential integrity constraints. So for the video, let me bump my text size back up. Don't worry about my eyesight, folks. I can see just fine, but again, it's just for the benefit of this video. Let's look at uh, one more command before I let you go, and that's the repeat. Let's actually look at two more commands. So we have an alias command, which helps you take queries that you run on a regular basis or scripts and uh, programmatically make those recallable. So I mean programmatically by I can um, put binds into them. Uh, you can also run full PL SQL blocks if you want, but I also give them names and I can call them by name. So I have an um, alias called tomorrow. Very simple. It runs uh, the sysdate from dual and adds days using a bind called days. And to run this, I uh, just say tomorrow 8. Now the second command is called repeat. So I want to run that same command 10 times every second. Imagine this is a query that you've ran to get a list of sessions and their SQL ID and SQL text. Or maybe you're running uh, a script to get uh, the status of a job that's um, building uh, an index and you want to pull from um, V$ dollar um, long ops. So you can build your own little monitors uh, here in the command line itself. Really cool stuff. So again, SQL CL. It's a Java application. The only requirement to run is a Java runtime, in, Java runtime engine. You download it, you extract it, you run it, you're good to go. You have new commands, you have a modern editor, you have uh, completion insight, SQL history, and if you need help, you simply type help. Thanks everyone for your time. Uh, enjoy using SQL CL.